Okay, well this time what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to introduce you to um, Gauss's Law in differential form. And when we're using Gauss's Law in differential form, what we're doing is we're looking at an um, inverse problem, right? So when we've used the um, Gauss's Law so far, uh, what we've done is we've taken a, um, a charge distribution and determined what the field would be if we had that charge distribution. Um, a rather a more um, common um, problem is to know an effect, such as what the field is or what maybe what the potential is, and uh, then have to try to find the um, the cause, right? And that's a little more difficult, and that's why you get paid so much to be an engineer, all right? So, so that's more or less what's going to happen with um, Gauss's law is rather than taking the charge distribution and finding the field, we're going to ha have the field and try to find a charge distribution. Um, and the field that I want to look at is this one. It's a um, piecewise field so that when the um, position um, in three dimensions, so, it's, so a, the y and z coordinates are um, are not really useful. Um, so y and z, z, everything's constant, but we have thing, the field changing in the x direction. Um, so when we're greater than, when x is greater than w over 2, we have this constant electric field, epsilon naught, in the positive x direction. When it, when x is less than minus w over 2, which is just, you know, what's the reverse happening on the opposite side, uh, we have minus F, E naught on the in the um, x hat direction for our field, and so in the remainder, when the absolute value of x is less than um, w over two, so in this region of width w, we have um, have this function here: the sine of x times four epsilon naught over w squared times the absolute value of w, uh, absolute value of x times w minus x squared. This is nice and dimensionally homogeneous. That's why there's the w there, and um, and so that gives you sort of an idea of um, what it looks like, right? Right? Wrong, wrong. You don't really know what that looks like. Yeah, I, I think maybe you can have some idea, but really with something like this, it's getting complicated enough that what you should do is you should try to draw out, draw out a representation of what the field is, right, as a um, function of x, okay? So as a function of x. So um, let's see our. So to do that, first we want to say, okay, we have our um, limits here. So we know that at w over two and minus w over two, there's some sort of difference between what is happening. Um, th there's a change in the behavior of the electric field, and um, at minus w over two, it's at, you know the electric field is this minus e naught. And at positive w over 2, um, it's at this level positive e naught. All right. So minus w over 2 and below, we've got minus e naught and positive um, positive w over 2 and above positive e naught. Now, when we look at this here, we'll see that at w over 2, um, this is w over 2 minus um, x squared w over 2 squared, so this is, this whole thing is um, w over uh, over 4, w squared over 4, which cancels that out, so it's just epsilon naught times um, the sine of x. So it's this is actually going to meet in both of these locations, so, so that's something nice to think about. Um, on top of that, we know that when x is small, right, this is just sine x times the absolute value of x is just x. When x is small, we have a more or less linear function like this. And then it's going to come up and meet at that, er at that place, sort of like this. So um, this is what our function looks like. We get a lot of functions that look sort of like this, have the same general behavior in physics. Um, so th th there might be some differences. Usually, there's a different function that we use to um, use to write that sort of shape. But 
this will do this is simple enough and um, something that I think you can get your head around pretty easily right so because of that we're going to use this and we're going to try to find in this case um, the charge distribution row Okay, um, I'm going to end up with a um, drawing, I think, so of what row is, right? So probably what's a really good habit to do in something like that is uh, to maybe draw this so that I have a little bit of space. I know I'm going to have some space here for drawing row um, when we get to when we get to that point at the end of the at the end of the video, right? So I've got this guy here, he's ready to go. When we do this, we'll be able to show row. So let's see our concept here. Um, well, this is pretty easy. I've told you already that it's Gauss's law. This is Gauss's law in differential form. Um, Gauss's law in differential form is that the is that the charge distribution at some point x is equal to epsilon naught times the divergence of the field at that point. So basically um, a kind of derivative of the field at that point. Um, so I think we're ready to go. We don't need any um, fancy stuff in this case. So um, this is really a direct application. It's just a little different from what you might be, um, what you might be used to. So uh, we'll just use a strategy and um, go from there. So our strategy in this case, I mean, it's a direct application of this equation. Uh, there's nothing major about it. All the only thing is, is that we need to look at what happens in three different regions. One here, two goes from minus W2 to W over two and three here, right? So we wanna look in these three regions and see, and see what happens. Um, now, it's easiest, and so I think we'll go ahead and do that. We'll, invest, we'll investigate um, in regions 1 and 2 with um, Gauss's law. Okay, so we can do that. That's um, fine. That's easy. That's something we'll be able to um, work with uh, very, very directly. Um, after we're done with that, or actually we want regions one and three. So these guys have this nice constant thing. If anything's going to be easy, it's going to be taking the derivative of a constant, right? Um, then we'll do so for region two. And that'll be really nice, right? Um, that, that's the point where we're going to get to really play with the derivative and see some stuff. And uh, that's basically the part that, you know, I want to show you. Uh, in regions um, one and three, what's going to happen is we don't see anything different from what I'm showing you in class, right? So we've got um, row one is equal to minus del E1, right? And that's minus del um, no, well, let me write out the del, the, the del operator for you. The del operator is x hat ddx plus y hat ddy plus z hat ddz in Cartesian coordinates. And since we have the Cartesian coordinate here, it looks like that's probably going to be our best, um, our best thing to work, work with, right? And then we'll dot that into um, this function here, e naught times x hat. Um, so let's see, what sort of things can we do here? Well, first of all, actually this is epsilon naught, sorry. Um, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out um, the e naught because it's a constant, so we have epsilon naught e naught, right? And then we're going to um, take the projection with the x hats. So we, for, so the x hats save only the ddx, right? And that's the um, and that's with respect to one. There's nothing else out here, so one is the number, 
and the um, derivative of a num number is just zero. So um, that's something that we saw in class that's easier than most of the stuff we did in class. And I think you're perfectly capable, capable of doing that. And I think it's also completely um, obvious that this is just this with a minus sign in front and a minus sign as a constant. Even if you wanted to just put minus one there, minus, the derivative of minus one is zero. So uh, we're at zero again. Nothing difficult so far. Now what we want to do is we want to do a slightly more complicated um, derivative. It's not something that's um, going to win you any prizes, but it is slightly more complicated than um, than a lot of the ones that you're going to do just because it has this sign function and it's got all this other stuff going on. And so it's probably best to play with this um, all together. Uh, E2 um, is going to be this fairly long thing, so let's just write it all out. Sine of x, right, 4 e naught over w squared, absolute value of x times w minus x squared in the x hat direction. We just said del dot x hat is just the derivative, so um, with respect to x. So we can just go with that. Um, this stuff here is a constant. So let's start by writing 4 epsilon naught e naught over w squared out here in front. And um, then we'll just do this projection part. So we have just ddx, the partial derivative with respect to x. Uh, then we have sine x times the stuff in parentheses. Um, if we distribute that, uh, the sine of x times this absolute value of x is just x. I mean, that's basically um, that's basically definitional. So we have d d x of x w minus the sine of x times um, x squared. What we what we can do with that is we can um, we can put an absolute value of x times x. So one, one of these guys gets um, whatever his sign is removed by multiplying by the sign, and we're left with just one of them. So now we get to play with the chain rule. Now I know you love to play with the chain rule. I know you've been waiting for that. So let's go ahead and get going and have a little bit of fun, right? Um, so, you know, the first part isn't so bad. The um, derivative of x with respect to w is just w, not a problem. Um, then when we do this part, uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say we're taking the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x squared. We've done this before. I know you're not um, too worried about it. Times um, x here. So we're doing okay. Everything looks hunky-dory. Um, no major issues. Uh, we come back down here put our constant out in front again over w squared, and we have w minus, and we do our chain rule, so we have um, the derivative of x squared, the square root of x squared over, with respect to x, times x minus, so we minus this, so it's, so the plus, the plus sign here is just a minus, uh, let's just put that in all the way so you can see it. Uh, the square root of x squared d d x with respect to x. This guy we know is a 1, so there's nothing there. This guy, yeah, I don't know if you remember how to do it. So let's, um, let's go, with, go ahead and uh, work through that. We've got a constant for epsilon naught e naught over w squared, w minus. Uh, this guy here, um, and that guy there is, well, first we take the um, first part of that, which is 1 half over the square root of x squared, um, dx squared, uh, dx, and this guy we have minus the absolute value of x, right? Um, because that's the square root of x squared, that's 1. So we're almost there. Um, so let's see what we can get out of that. Uh, for epsilon naught e naught over w squared, uh, w minus, for this guy we have the uh, derivative of this is 2x, did I forget, I forgot to put that x there, okay, 
the um, derivative with respect to that gives us um, 2x, 2x, and we have multiply that by x. So we have x squared over the square root of x squared um, minus the absolute value of x. Uh, this is just the square root of x squared, right? So that's another absolute value of x. So we have 4 epsilon naught e naught over um, w squared um, w minus 2 absolute value of x. Okay. Um, so let's just go ahead and then um, 3, we should write, it, write the distribution. So the distribution tells us um, basically what the um, charge is everywhere, right? And we have basically two, pit, two bits. We have this part here. We have 4 e naught times epsilon naught over w squared w minus 2 times the absolute value of x on the inside, right? So on the inside means um, x is, the absolute value of x is less than w over 2, and in the opposite case, we have nothing, okay? So when we come back up here, right? Uh, uh, unfortunately, we can't see, the mo see everything at the same time, I don't think. I, that's close enough. So outside this um, w over outside this width, this from minus w over two to w over two, uh, we have our row being zero. So we got that. that that's looking okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, then we have this um, sort of tenth tenth function. We have w minus two x squared. So if we um, if we just set x equal to 0, we have 4 epsilon naught times e naught over w. So that's our, um, that's our maximum charge density. And at x is equal to w over 2, we have 0. Same thing at minus w over 2. It's nice and linear, right, on either side. So it looks something like that. And, um, and so you can compare those just by looking at them, where we've got everything moving around like that. We've got some charge distribution that's um, changing in its uh, character. And then here we have no charge whatsoever. So um, this is, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what would do this. Um, let's say we've got some sort of um, surface effect so that near the surface we don't, you know, we're losing um, charge. And so we have something in inside of a material or something like that that's charged in some area that's out. And um, that gives us a field like this. I think that's um, pretty much what we want to look at. It's, it's um, pretty reasonable, something that we can um, get, our head, get our heads around. Um, we're going to look a lot more at this form of Gauss's law later on in the course than we will for the... Um, integral form. Uh, that's because this is really important um, theoretically, especially when we're starting to deal with Maxwell's equations. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this gives you an idea of what this actually means and how we can, how we can use it. And I will see you in class. Bye now.